So the England squad has just been announced for the upcoming Nations League fixtures against Italy and Germany. And with it obviously comes a lot of discussion. Today's video we are going to be talking about the players that have been included in the squad and those that have missed out, thoughts in general about the squad, about Southgate's decisions and everything like that. So I'm more than open to hearing your comments, criticisms, love for the squad in the comments down below. So if you have any thoughts, please do get involved. If you enjoy the video and you want to see more, then there's so much content coming up now that I'm back and settled in my new setup. Uh, so make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe, and let's get into this interesting England squad. So as per usual, we start off with the goalkeepers and we've got Dean Henderson, Nick Pope and Aaron Ramsdale. Now, Jordan Pickford is injured, so it's not really that surprising in order to see these three names on the team sheet. Nick Pope, you'd think, has to be the number one at this stage. Maybe he'll give it to Ramsdale, but Pope has been really, really solid for many years at this stage and has been a good, good keeper so far this year. For Newcastle potentially getting them maybe four or six points arguably so far already in this season. Ramsdale, yeah he's been good for Arsenal uh, since coming in and has proved to himself that he is a competent goalkeeper. I feel like Nick Pope should probably get the edge and I feel like these three are pretty fair choices. Now we get into the absolute plethora of defenders. Now we know that Southgate loves to play five at the back because He's boring and <laughs> doesn't seem to be able to manage a four at the back system that's utilizing the better attacking and exciting players that we have in the squad. So let's go through these. We have Trent, who this season is not having a good time and yet is in the squad despite probably being left out of the squad when he was in better form previously. Not really sure I get that logic. Ben Chilwell, who has been injured and then not playing. Again, that that's fine. There's other options of other players in other teams that are playing week in, week out, but it's okay. Connor Cody. Okay, he just seems to be a, a favourite of Gareth since he first played and now will get in regardless of any form or anything like that. Eric Dyer has actually been good under Conte. Something I'm not sure I ever thought I would say. I used to not rate Eric Dyer at all. However, in Conte's system, he's finding his feet a lot more and is actually looking like a more competent player. Mark Gay, I'm not really sure many people would complain about this one. Uh, he had a good breakthrough for England uh, towards the end of last season and looks like a more up-and-coming England player than some of the ones that basically seem to get in because they've played for England before. Next, we've got Rhys James. This is an absolute no-brainer. He should be the starting right back without a shadow of doubt, in my opinion. He is really, really good going forward, solid defensively as well. Can play four, can play five at the back. I feel like he is the main man there. Harry Maguire is in the squad, and... The, the the puzzling part for me is, okay, he's not been bad for England in the past. However, Southgate has multiple times said that he will pick players on form, not on like who they play for or their name or merit. How are you picking someone that has been dropped because they've been awful for like a year straight? Uh... It blows my mind, really, and it's it's just pretty painful. He's also come out and said, and I quote, It's not ideal picking players who can't get in their club team, but he believes in them, so it's fine. I just don't get the logic. You've got someone like Ben White, who even playing out of position at right back rather than centre back, has been pretty good. For Arsenal, right? And since they signed him, he came in on big money, struggled a little bit at first, but has been solid since. And him in defence with like Saliba and players like that, Gabriel, has been looking good. Yet you put in Maguire and maybe even Cody over the... I just, I don't get it. Next up we got Luke Shaw, another man that isn't playing. <laughs> Malassia has completely just dominated that left-back spot uh, in the Man U squad now and is looking really, really good. Shaw has been dropped. 
He's not playing, yet he's in the team. Uh, I don't know. Even someone like Matt Target could have probably got in ahead of him. He's used James Justin in the past. He could have used him again, even though last time it was debatable whether he actually played that well. But if you're playing five at the back, then he's a better wing back. I, I don't know. John Stones, again, a bit like Reese James for me. Instantly, yes, he's in. He should be starting. Tamori. Good to see that he's actually having faith in English players that don't play in the Premier League, right? There's probably more that he could do that with. Probably some championship players that he could have picked up, but doesn't because it's Gareth. But good to see. Kieran Trippier, I, I feel like, again, this is a very, very good one because he's probably second best behind Rhys James for that right back position. Can also play on the left as well, which is really, really good. Has that versatility, has the set piece potential uh, for corners, free kicks, etc. So... Uh, is also in good form as well. So I think Trippier is a safe pick. And then the last one is Kyle Walker. Many people that know me know that I'm not a massive fan of Kyle Walker. Um, I, I just don't... He's a pace merchant to me. But he seems to get picked in every single squad without fail. Does a lot of the time play right centre-back rather than right wing-back, which sort of helps him out because he doesn't have to go forward at all from there. So fair enough. But... Yeah, some of the choices here are bizarre. I'm, I'm interested to hear your guys' thoughts. Now we move on to midfield, and let's go one by one again. Jude Bellingham. Sure. No complaints there. We move on. Mason Mount. Not had the best season so far. Um, did have a very good year last year in terms of numbers. Uh, but this season has, I mean, with a lot of Chelsea, not really found his feet so far. Calvin Phillips, who has he even kicked a ball for Man City? Not sure. If he has, then not many. Yet again, a player that seems to have been picked because of what he's done for England previously, rather than the fact that he's in form. He might not. Like these players that aren't playing may not even be properly match fit, and yet they're being chosen like it's nothing. It's bizarre. Declan Rice, again, sure. Should be one of the first names on the team sheet for me. Has to be in there. And then James Ward-Prowse, again, now seems to be a bit of a Gareth Southgate favourite. And isn't surprising to see him there, um, regardless of form or anything like that. So, it's, it's a tricky one for me. I mean, obviously, Leicester fan, through and through. I don't understand what Madison has to do to get in the England squad. Last season, he had like the most goal involvements of any English player. This season, he's already been involved in some goals as well. Has the set-piece potential as well. I don't get it. I'm not sure what I'm missing here. I, I, the man's a baller. And previously, Gareth has said... Oh, it's because there's other people in his position that are doing better and stuff like that. Mount hasn't been better than Madison this season, and arguably not last season either. But you could take both of them over the millions of defenders that don't play, or some of the forwards that aren't in good form. It infuriates me a lot. And then we got the forwards. So, Tammy Abraham, balling out at Roma... Very, very different option to what we have in our other forwards as well. I like the pick. I think it's fine. Jared Bowen. Very good season last year. This season is struggling. Not really doing anything uh, at all. And so, again, another player that seems to be in on merit rather than form. So, I don't know why Southgate says what he says. It's infuriating. Phil Foden gets in without question ever. I feel like Foden is one of those players that can never be criticised because he's young, English, and has a bit of technical ability. Even if he's not in good form, no one ever seems to question it. So he's always going to be in the squad as long as he's fit. Uh, Jack Grealish, another one that is massively struggling. Ever since he moved to Man City, he's not been the same Grealish. Like, I remember... Uh, going into the last tournament. He was the guy. 
THE guy that everyone wanted to see in every game, and he hardly got played. So, now that he's playing less for City, and having way less of an impact, he still gets picked. It confuses me. Like, I got him on my England shirt going into the last tournament, because he was so exciting. But he looks a shadow of his villa self. I don't know. It's, again, a another one that's in over matters. Not bitter at all. Uh, Harry Kane is always going to be in there. Um, just England's most reliable and best striker, really. Uh, Bukayo Saka, not had the best start to the season. Had a very, very good year last year. Uh, Arsenal are flying this year. He's just not been involved in as many goals as you would have liked. But they're getting the results anyway, so it's not that bad. Uh, I do like Saka a lot. And he also is weirdly versatile in the fact that he will either play right wing or potentially left back. So I, I, I feel like... He can be a baller on his day, and he also has the versatility. That one makes a bit more sense. Uh, you've got Raheem Sterling in here, who is actually doing really well at Chelsea so far. He's going to be their top scorer this year. Uh, there were question marks as to whether it was going to work, whether he'd play through the middle, whether he'd play on the left, and they'd, they'd keep Lukaku or someone like that. But now they're bringing in a Bamiyang. So... He's done really well, uh, unfortunately, scored against us. And, yeah, I, I feel like Sterling is... He's an interesting player, because I remember in the previous tournament, he didn't play well, but he got the goals or assists. And, to be honest, when you're trying to win a tournament, that's all you need, really. So, you can drop a 2 out of 10, but if you score the winner... I don't give a damn what the rest of your performance was like. And that's basically what he did last time. And he has been good for England uh, over the years as well uh, as having current form. So Raheem makes sense, as does the last name on this team sheet. Mr. Ivan Tony gets his call up. Smashed it for Brentford, uh, both in the championship he was unbelievable broke the goal scoring record before Mitrovic decided to obliterate it uh did well in his first season in the prem has started this season really really well and for once Gareth seems to have actually picked someone on form rather than just oh you you've played for England in the past but we'll we'll choose you again <laughs> so i'm glad that he is getting his opportunity because it seems well deserved so, there are a couple of names, obviously, that in this team are controversial, to say the least. And it's it's questionable why some players are in here and some are not. I would like to hear your guys' thoughts as to the specific players that you think have missed out or those that you specifically say... Um, should not be in the squad. So Rashford and Sancho have been dropped out of the squad. Sancho's probably doing a bit better than Rashford right now, but is still not in the best of form. So maybe when he picks things up a little bit, he will get back in the squad. Um, Madison, <laughs> Gareth clearly just hates him uh, for whatever reason. Uh, you could have someone like Target for left back. You could have Ben White in there. Maguire, Chilwell, Cody, Phillips, Grealish, these guys that don't start every game. And even when they do play, they're not doing that well. So I feel like every time I do one of these videos, it's frustration because we just know that Gareth likes to play this boring five at the back system. I would have loved Potter to have left Brighton to go to England rather than Chelsea or to come to us, to be honest. But <sighs> Gareth, does what he does and it's just not really a surprise at this stage so let me know your thoughts your controversial opinions who is your massive underdog shout that you think should potentially get a chance in the England team if it was based off last season I would have said Dewsbury Hall this year he's not been quite as good so Madison get him in the squad if you enjoyed the video there's loads more coming up thumb it up subscribe see you guys next time goodbye